Hello there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. So today is the first day of the new kit of the week and that kit is of course the Dornier Dio 17Z in one seventy second scale from FX. Today I'll be having a look at the history of this kit and its predecessors in the FX range. I'll have a look at what other versions of the Dio 17 are available from other manufacturers and of course, I'll be having a look inside the box of this Airfix kit to see what you get for your money. If you uh, want to hop back and forth between these things, these all come as chapters, of course. If you like the program, and I hope you do, please remember the Imperial thumbs up on the like button down there. And if you haven't done so yet, subscribe to the channel, please, by clicking on the small logo down in the bottom right. Doesn't cost you a penny to do that. Does help me enormously, however. If you want to give some more concrete support, you can do that through perhaps Super Thanks, if you like, or by any of my partner programs, including a link to the Airfix online store. You click on that, go through and buy anything at all. Airfix, at no cost to you, will make a donation to this site. And of course, if you're an Airfix club member, you still get your 10% discount. Now, another part of being in the Airfix club, of course, is the Flying Hours program. This kit was made possible by the donation of a frankly silly amount of flying hours by my very, very dear friend, Neil. I've known Neil for <coughs> quite a lot of years, let's just say, um, very nearly 50 years in fact. He's a very, very good modeler, very keen modeler himself. When he knew I was doing this channel, he said, oh, by the way, Gary, I've got a, got a few flying hours if you could use them. And uh, one time we met up, he bought them in a big bag um, probably, I don't know, 140, 150 flying hours. So this kit and two or three more in future will be there thanks to the generosity of my very good mate, Neil. Neil, mate, this one's for you, fella. Cheers. So let's get on then and start with a look at the history of the Dornier DO17 kit in FX. This new release of the Dornier DO17Z comes from a new tooling that was first released in 2014. This was subsequently also released as a dogfight double with the Bolton Paul Defiant in 2015. The previous Airfix kit of the Dornier DO17 depicted the E and F model from a tooling first made in 1972. This was re-released six more times each time with the same markings, the latest being in 2008. In 172nd scale, there are currently two major releases of the Dornier DO17 available in stores. The first range comes from ICM, based around a new tool released in 2016 of the Z10 variant. Since that time, there have also been releases of the Z2, the Z7, and the Z2 again in Finnish service, I think with different engines. In 2017, this kit was also rebranded as a Revel release. The other principal line is from RS Models, starting with the DO17P in 2007. Since then, they've released the E, F, K, and M variants in a wide range of markings. On auction sites you may also be able to find the earlier Revel kits. These derive from the 1969 monogram tooling or even the 1971 frog release that found its way into the Matchbox lineup as well. So the box, as usual, features some new fancy digital artwork. This one of the Dornier 17 being brought down near RAF Kenley, I think. Um, Hurricane in the background, poor German fellow trying a ridiculously low level parachute attempt. Anyway, lovely piece of artwork as usual, depicting one of the kits in the set. 
Inside, as usual, we have a this one, one pack of lots of sprues of plastic, which we'll have a look at in more detail in a minute. There is also the instruction booklet, which at the back has the two scheme options that are included here. Um, again, we'll have a look at all of these in more detail in a minute. There is the sheet of decals, cartograph as usual, and then placement for the stencils for both versions of the 17 that are in here. So let's have a closer look at all of those. Here's frame A, obviously the fuselage halves, the uh, fins and rudders, Bombay doors, no sorry, the undercarriage doors, um, some interior details and some parts of the engine bay here. Frame B has the single piece upper wing, the undercarriage, which some of these parts look very, very spindly, I have to say, um, wheels, uh, just other bits and pieces, seats, engine covers, engines and so on. Frame C has the uh, tail, the bomb doors, engine nacelles, various small bits and pieces of interior, the ailerons and of course the two lower halves of the wing. Then frame D, which is essentially everything else, uh, propellers, more parts for the undercarriage, flaps, uh, four crew members with posable arms, how exciting, bomb racks, uh, bombs, fuel tanks and so on, all the extra bits and pieces. It is nice to see, you know, four person crew in a kit like this, um, I haven't seen that for quite a long time with Airfix. Then on frame E is what I can only describe as a veritable greenhouse of glass pieces for the canopy, nose, gun positions, so on and so forth. There's a lot of glass to mask off here. I would, I would say as an aside, um, I really, really, really do suggest you get a set of masks for this because there is so much glass there if you're spraying it you really need to do this because hand cutting those masks will be a nightmare if you're hand painting them well you're you're a much 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 better modeler than i i could never do that so i bought myself a, a set of uh, canopy masks they really weren't expensive at all in terms of instructions got pretty much the usual uh, fare from Airfix, so which is a good thing, I think, because I like their instructions these days. Um, we have these red parts that show you things you've already made and where they all fit in. Standard sort of upper three-quarter um, perspective-free design. Normally very clear. I, I, obviously, I'll have to have a look later to see how it all goes together, but very clear. I still, you know... The numbers, you have to write in the paint numbers to remind you sometimes. I'm sure 240 is a, a German interior colour. 85, I know, is coal black. But um, sometimes the colours we'll need to actually write on as we go along. But we can do that another time. Yeah, usual. Well thought out, as far as I'm aware. Straightforward. Lots of options on these. You can have the elevators up and down. You can have the flaps open or closed. I'm sure you can have the rudders and the ailerons posed as you wish. Undercarriage up or down, of course. As I say, these spindly little things. I have to see how they go on. And some options for the weapons. Either lots of small bombs or two very big bombs. Or a mixture of the two. Or an external fuel... Oh, sorry, an internal fuel tank as well. Which is quite cool. Quite a lot of options. And lots of guns and stuff like that to go on as well. And, of course, the big transparencies. So, generally speaking, it looks pretty straightforward. So, scheme A is for an aircraft of 9 Kampfgeschwad de 76, based in northern France at Comet-en-Vaxin. This is one shot down near Biggin Hill in Kent. 
after a raid on RF Kenley and is the one featured on the cover of the box. Looks like I'm going to have to get a few, uh, few new colours because I don't think I've got any of those. And Scheme B is for an aircraft based in Greece in 1941 of uh, one Kampfgeschwader 2 at Menidi Aerodrome uh, near Tatoi. Again, all the standard um, RLM colours are here, none of which I've got in my paint box. This is a bit more interesting maybe because of the large amounts of yellow on it, but I think both both schemes are pretty good, so I'll probably stick with the one from the box. There's a sheet showing stencil positions. Um, fortunately, I think the Germans are actually pretty good at knowing what to put where, so you know they didn't open panels unless they were told to and things like that. So I don't need lots of warnings saying do not open this panel. So not that many stencils. Some of them like these long black ones here. These show the position of stencils that are either red in one scheme or yellow in another. So there's a list of alternate numbers here. But otherwise it's not too much, so shouldn't be too much of an issue. And then the decal sheets, as usual with F, it says the common decals at the top here, including the instrument panel. All the national markings, of course, there's no swastikas because this is airfix and they don't do them. Uh, there's Kampfgeschwader 2 here and Kampfgeschwader 76, which is what I'm doing down here. As usual, these are really high quality, really sharp, really good colour. They're cartograph, what can I say? Um, I can't, if, if I zoom in on the phone, it goes into digital zoom, so you lose the sharpness of the image, mainly through the digital zoom. However, this is the, the, the better lens, the tele lens, so hopefully you can see here, like, like don't step and pressures and stuff like that you have to abide by. They're nice and clean, sharp, crisp prints. And the plastic, oh, it appears yeah, reasonably sharp. Uh, there's some nice panel lines. Um, as usual with Airfix, they may be a bit bigger than other companies will use, but then they're going to be a lot easier to pick up, especially with the darker colours of this aircraft. Uh, the pieces look yeah, reasonably good. Um, not, not what you'd call like shaving sharp, obviously. Not that good. But um, given the types of plastic they're using on this, you know, not bad. Um, yeah, there's, there's no major flash anywhere. In fact, you can't actually see much flash at all. And it looks well enough moulded. It, it's that plastic, though. It's... I don't know. There's, it's, it's not that it's soft. It just looks a little bit sort of sheeny and soapy and... I don't know, Does, doesn't look quite as substantial as, say, the Buccaneer parts do. But, you know, it, it'll probably be fine. I'm, I'm just being massively overcritical and maybe imagining there's something strange with the plastic when there isn't. We'll see them build it, of course. Inch, instrument or panels here look OK. There's, there's enough detail in there to pick up. Um, yeah, it's just maybe sometimes the moulds aren't actually razor sharp, but then these tools have probably been used quite a long time. So, actually, they're okay. They're good. They're good. No, they are good. They're good. Let's be positive about it. They're good. They will be grand. It's here on things like the um, engine, if you're going to be hypercritical, which I, I kind of feel of reviewing something you should be, then they don't look that well moulded to me, um, that they could be a sharper mould. But then you've got these lovely chairs, which look fantastic. Um, and this terribly spindly undercarriage, not very German at all, normally. You know, German stuff was a bit bit more heavy going than that, I suspect. Um, but the parts are fine, the parts are, are grand. You know, the uh, upper surface detail is okay. We can pick out a lot of that as we make the kit. Yeah, it's just things like, you know, the, these engines could be a bit sharper printed and, well, 
um, molded rather. Again, the crew figures. Um, you know, in one seventy second, I think the standard I that I but I think they set themselves was with this the pilot of the P forty Warhawk because that he's dead sharp and really crisp and clean. I mean, you could even see his tie for goodness sakes. These again, possibly through use, are just that little bit soft. They're they're fine. They're good. And you know they're going behind glass so you probably won't see much of them but um and yeah they're, they're poseable arms there the ribbing inside the flaps is okay it's not again crystal blindingly sharp but it's not bad um the small bombs hazard are in one piece which means i haven't got loads and loads and loads of little bombs to glue together the larger bombs of course uh, come as two halves and as does the long range fuel tank but yeah the parts are fine the parts are fine I'm being too critical for my own good sometimes the parts are fine they're going to look great pilots could be sharper I have to say to, to pick out their uh, flying gear a bit but they're better than I have seen from some places including FX in the past so they'll do there we go then, all looks very good. Um, can't foresee any major issues at the moment from what I hear. It's relatively straightforward, but we'll see how we go. Um, I'm looking forward to making it. Never made a DO17 before, so this will be quite fun. Of course, if you like this, please do say so. Thumbs up down there. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. And if you click on subscribe and you also click on the bell, then you'll get a notification when new videos turn up, including the build video and the combo special with some historical material that will be later on this week. So thank you so much for watching. Do come back for the build video and I'll see you hopefully next time. Mm -hmm.